Hey there, welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the natural family planning conversation. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Joe Nufable. Joe has been in ministry for a number of years. Uh, Joe and I have served together in ministry. We've been co-workers together, and we just kind of do life together. Joe and his wife just celebrated their one-year anniversary, and Joe and I spend quite a bit of time talking about prayer, intimacy in your marriage, uh, foreplay a little bit. And you will notice this episode is a little bit longer than uh, our other episodes, and that's honestly because we had a lot to say on this topic. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. All right. Well, welcome, Joe. Thank you so much for coming onto the podcast today. I'm really, I have been so excited to talk about this topic. It's just been on my mind since before we even started recording episodes for this podcast. I was like, oh, I want to do this episode. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, I guess, I mean, it's something we, yeah, we should think about more as married people, but yeah, it's a interesting thing to talk about. <laughs> Especially uh, not being a married couple like us, yeah, and we're yeah. about to go talk about it, but we should stop beating around the bush about what we're going to talk about. Right. Um, is prayer a part of your foreplay? It needs to be, it should, uh, it makes <laughs> yeah. it so much more fun it being prayer and th- what you use prayer as a foreplay for but <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, it's it it is a part of my of of the foreplay between my wife and I and and for a lot of things and I think you mean that or I should mean that in a literal sense but I also mean in the spiritual sense like you know foreplay towards everything else but um you know leading up to you know the marital act itself it should be foreplay yeah absolutely I mean Foreplay isn't necessarily the 20 minutes before actually having sex, right? Or, or, yeah, or 15 or 5 or 25 or 30. No, uh, <laughs> or whatever yeah. amount of time it is. <laughs> yeah. I, it, the, the foreplay should be our entire married life, our whole day, yeah. our, our week leading up to, uh, you know, the foreplay should be happening during the entire fertile time that you might need to be abstaining for right? Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you where, like, I kind of got the, the term from, it, it kind of like changed the way I look at everything, but mm-hmm. I kind of turned from a, a, a Catholic youth ministry convention hosted by Life Teen. And this was like my, my first summer working as a full-time youth minister, uh, like six years ago, seven years ago, some time ago. That was seven and, uh, years ago. Oh my God. Six, six, sorry. Um, yeah, that was a long time ago. Not that we're old or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I I was sitting in a, a workshop by Mark Hart. And, you know, this guy is not just a, you know, youth minister par excellence. Like, he <laughs> is a really big scripture nerd, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't know why he felt like he needed to say this, but he was just like, hey, before we talk about scripture, let's just pray. Because if we're like a theology of the body faith, like prayer is the foreplay before we, like, listen to the word of god and i was yes. like yes okay yeah i'm following you bro you know um <laughs> like, wait, and I getting, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i was just like, gonna foreplay with me wait what uh yeah I, I thought it was like a really cool thing to think about we should approach everything with prayer um prayer is our starting point it's our launching point you know and uh it, it's something we say in um like ministry a lot like um, let's begin with a prayer. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and mm-hmm. Holy Spirit. Or, you know, if you ever like went to a Lasallian school, they'll always say, um, let's place ourselves in the presence of God. In the and they, they say that before every class begins. Um, and it's like something like the teachers, whether they're Catholic or not, have to like know how to do, right? And it's right. a beautiful thing. Like starting everything with prayer is important. Um, and so I guess when it comes, not a guess, but when it comes to our sexuality, um, prayer is just a big launch point for it, you know? Um, sure. And particularly using natural family planning in your marriage, it, mm-hmm. it requires a certain amount of, not a certain amount, a ton of trust mm-hmm. um, and willingness to 
follow God's will and just work within his design. And that prayer can really lead us to being a part of that design. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you go back to that old school song, right? Like first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes baby and the baby (laughs) carriage. Like if, if, if it were rewritten by Catholics, they would put like first comes desire, then comes love, then comes marriage. Like, cause like desire has to come first, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you don't just magically fall in love and the same for people who are married and people who practice NFP and who are married, like desirability is still something that we have to like work on despite vowing, you know, yourself to each other. And, um, love is something you work on and the desire is a huge part of that, but also like desiring to do things as God designed, right? Yes. And, and that, you know, is, is, it's not just the most fulfilling, it's like the most fun, like the most fun I'm having in, in my marriage is just more like, oh, like this is, this is exactly what God made marriage for, you know? And like, even, right. even when, when you're struggling, you know what I mean? Like those small moments where like my wife and I like, we'll get into a conflict or we'll have our disagreement and then we'll just stop. And then it'd be like, something funny would just come out. And it was just like, <laughs> Um, and you know, it's not all rainbows and sunshines, you know what I mean? But like, there's a lot of moments of grace where it's just like, man, like, this is what makes marriage so fun. And when, when Janessa and I went to marriage prep, um, you know, the, the people facilitating the retreat, um, they were just super like in love and they had fun and they were really honest about their struggles. And I was just like, man, if that's what that looks like that much into marriage, like, I, I want that you know, and I just saw how prayer was a big part of it, you know. Right. And I think we see that a lot is when we see people really living out their faith, especially a married couple really living out their faith, it's Mm -hmm. desirable to follow that. And I think um, that goes along with natural family planning. When we see a couple really living out natural family planning and being prayerful in it and following God's will through it, it's desirable to have that within our marriages. Right. Yeah. I, I want to share with you a story real quick of, uh, you know, Janessa and I's marriage retreat. Like we, we went on this retreat and, and prayer was a huge part of it. And like praying mm-hmm. as a couple and then like, it just sounds, it sounded so weird, but like, you know, hold each other's hands, look each other in the eye and say a prayer together, you know, it's just like, okay, like we pray together, but like, this is like really intimate. And then, you know, they kind of joked around like, yeah, that's the point, you know? And there were, yeah, there were other couples who you saw like really uncomfortable with it. And we saw other couples who were super into it. And then we wanted to like, wow, like look at them. And they're just like super into their prayer life together. And there's such intimacy there. And then kind of like, you just see a lot of these couples kind of just transformed by this um, experience of them learning how to pray together. And, um, the, especially for the couple who thought it was weird at first, they were taking those baby steps. And I think that's, what's the cool part is like, it's always going to be worked on, you know? Right. Prayer is something yeah. that can be built on day yeah. by day, time by time. You know, you can, start, you can start prayer with your spouse with just, you know, as you start your day together, uh, Lord, we give this day to you. Amen right? And, and there's where you can start and you can go from there and you can build from there and you can pray for longer together and deeper and more intimate. Um, you know, I, I want to now jump kind of into prayer really as that foreplay. And now we're talking foreplay, like as in, in the bedroom, <laughs> yeah. but you talked about prayer as building that intimacy and what is more intimate in marriage than sex Mm -hmm. and how much more intimate could it become if you make it a prayer? Yeah. I mean, you know, for my wife and I, like getting into NFP was not easy, you know, and it was something that we were very nervous about. And, um, but it was like a big thing we prayed about, you know, it was something Mm -hmm. like, Lord, like, we just want to do this right. You know? And desiring that it was almost like again it was the launching point but it it gave us so much foundation to work on everything else right like desiring to do it the way god was calling us and challenging us to you know um 
without any other uh, substances, like a lot of our family was suggesting we should, and um, you know, what the culture suggests, you know, and, um, but also like wanting to stay in the state of grace, you know, and, and not just like pulling out, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it was to do it right was so difficult. And so like, it was something that we really had to pray about, like, Lord, we, we want to do this right. We want to, we want to work on this. And again, it wasn't just desiring to do sexuality right. It was desiring to make um, God who this act is a, you know, image and likeness of um, mm-hmm. the foundation of that act, you know? And so it made, you know, um, the marital act, like, yeah, so much more beautiful and fun, you know? It was it was so much fun. And, and the prayer, like, it, it was a part of, like, um, the more we prayed about it and the more we prayed to work on it, um, the more we looked forward to it, you know, like, absolutely. Yeah. I, and I think that's key in basically anything in our life is, is the more that we pray to desire something that, good, the more that we pray to get better at something or, or work harder at something, the better it becomes because our God is a loving God. And that's, yeah. you know, that's exactly what you experienced with your wife. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Like, so prayer, I mean, it, it kind of goes into the place where, you know, say if, if one person's libido is there and the other's not, like, um, you're kind of put in this position where, like, what do you do with these desires, you know? Um, sexuality is meant to be a full gift um, of both persons together, you know, um, for it to be consummate, you know? And so, like, when you respond to that situation with prayer, um, it's you are ordering your desire right to be expressed in that full way and it's like okay i'm going to reserve this expression for when we we both want to and i know that's like a very like distant way of looking at it you know it's like just trying to look at it in under a microscope or <laughs> um, uh, observing it in a theological lens but um that's where like the prayer gets to the nitty gritty and where NFP gets hard. Right. Right. And I appreciated, I, man, like, yeah, I appreciate the gift of prayer so much. Um, because if not, um, physically with my wife, um, spiritually through the gift of prayer, right? Like I can make a gift of myself and my heart and my desires to the Lord and my Lord, um, or my Lord, the Lord um, <laughs> takes that and he gives you new grace to express that in, in ways that are outside your comfort zone in ways that you're not comfortable with, but is still love nonetheless. And I'm grateful for that so much because um, yeah, I've grown so much outside of my comfort zone because of it. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, I think that's marriage as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things that I think you're touching on there is patience. And patience is so key within uh, a marriage in any situation, but particularly with natural family planning. And Mm -hmm. that is something that prayer can really help with, especially when there's extended periods of abstinence for one reason or another. Um, I know in my personal experience, postpartum is like an insane extended period of abstinence sometimes that's just how it happens <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's it's so it's so uh interesting you brought that up because like there are moments where i think like oh man like is my wife gonna face that you know um and then it brings you to like a serious moment of prayer it's like oh what if she does you know and it's like mm-hmm. what kind of husband am i gonna be right but prayer gives you that space to just like really surrender it to the Lord and be like, man, I just hope that I'm a, a, an understanding and a patient husband at that time, you know? And so, so goes with like any other circumstance, you know, like I, I, yeah, I, Janessa and I, we so desire to be parents and, and we're getting there. Right. So I'm just like constantly praying for our vocation and the vocation, like we do feel called to, and uh, that the Lord kind of just prepares us for it. And we're not there yet, right? Um, we hope to get there soon. 
Um, and I, I think that prayer helps with everything you need to overcome while patience is like the only thing you can have at that moment, right? Absolutely. Like, <laughs> oh, patience, that's killer. Like, all I have right now, and there's so much more to come, but I'm <laughs> going to use this patience to keep on getting through it. Um, and that's been enough. And like prayer is allowing us or, or helping us to build up those other qualities that we need in mm-hmm. ourselves uh, when all we have is just this little tiny smidgen of patience. Right. That's right. all we can cling to. Cool. And, and we can cling to prayer to bring us into being more present as a, a husband or wife to our spouse and more being more intimate with our spouses. Yeah. It's so important to use that prayer as an acceptance. Like this patience is, is the gift right now. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it's not just, this is enough, but this is like the way I'm going to love my spouse. Right. I'm going to love my spouse through this patience and it gets you to that next level of intimacy, you know? Um, and so, uh, yeah, it, it, it is the foreplay, right? Cause it's, it's, it's ultimately leading up and it's, it's not going to always be in the timeline that you want. Right. Sure. And, and foreplay in a physical sense should always lead to consummation. Right. In a spiritual sense, like prayer with the patients spiritually, like does bring people closer together. Right. Like you think that, Oh, I got to be patient and I'm not getting what I want right now. But like you're dying to yourself you're putting your ego aside and you're saying like this is how i'm going to love you spiritually yeah you're com- you're coming closer together as a couple and it might suck for either the spouse who has to practice the patience right. right um but that's what it means to unite yourself to the cross right like that's where mm-hmm. nfp is really living out the um the the suffering and the sacrifice and also the new life uh, the cross, mm. you know? Absolutely. Well, and we kind of joked at the beginning of this episode, like, oh, it's the foreplay of the 20 minutes before you actually yeah. come together as husband and wife. But but foreplay doesn't have a defined amount of time, right? Mm. You know, it might be five minutes. It might be 20 minutes. It might be two months. Yep. Right? And you've been praying with your spouse, growing deeper uh, in intimacy together, uh, growing deeper in your faith together. And you've spent two months leading up to this one particular marital act because of one reason or another. Yeah. And and let's be real. Let's let's be really, really real. Like for some couples and even in, in my experience, sometimes it's just the spouse praying for the other spouse because, you know, maybe that shared prayer time is is difficult or it's 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 something that you're working through right like Mm -hmm. i realized um that you know when when janessa and i we were having real fruitful seasons of prayer together as a couple um it it would be difficult for other couples to witness because they weren't facing that they weren't experiencing that Mm -hmm. you know and so it just kind of opened our eyes like man you know not every couple is having like they're always on the same page and i think when you have the conversation of prayer um with your partner with your spouse you got to have the conversation that like there will be periods where um, like everything else in a marriage one spouse is going to be carrying the prayer load more than the other Mm -hmm. spouse or maybe one spouse is having a dry season in their prayer and the other is kind of like that spiritual um you know, uh, foundation for, for the other. And, um, that's a part of marriage and and that's what makes it awesome and difficult, but, um, that's foreplay too, you know? Right. Absolutely. And, and that's the beauty of journeying with someone in marriage Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, your goal being to lead the other person to heaven. Um, you know, sometimes, that might mean you need to carry the prayer load and you need to pray that person um, out of their funk or <laughs> their dry season or, uh, you know, whatever, just, just pray for them during whatever that season is for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and especially like right now, you know, like so one of the things that uh, my wife and I really love to do together was go to mass. Like that, that was a very intimate time for us. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, 
yeah, it's, it's like by far one of the things I love the most about being married. It's like to approach the Lord, you know, together as husband and wife. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, this whole shelter in place, COVID-19 pandemic, just like ripped away, ripped that away from us, you know? And, uh, you know, as of lately, there's just been a lot of moments where, okay, um, you know, one of us is struggling in our prayer lives. I'm, you know, and, and this is something that I do, right? But like, I'll, you know, let my my wife fall asleep and I'll just pray for her as she sleeps, you know? Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, um, Lord, when she wakes up, just like, you know, fill her heart with all the graces that she needs to, to, to do her work and to, to go um, do the things that she needs to do and, you know, form our hearts as, you know, future parents. And I'll pray for the thing that we're looking forward to. If it's truly foreplay, right, it's praying towards the thing you're looking forward to. Absolutely. And so we, we look very, we very much look forward to be parents. And, and as much as it's, it's just a desire right now, the, the desire, love, marriage, then comes baby and the baby carriage. Like we're not there yet, <laughs> but we're, we're praying towards it. And we know that's where we want to get to. Um, but prayer and the patience thing is, is where we're at right now. And even if, you know, um, one of us isn't there in our prayer lives or, you know, we're having a dry season. Um, I still find it very romantic to pray for my spouse when it's not, when she's not there, you know what I mean? Like, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and, I remember she heard it one time. She was like, really? You do that? And I was like, yeah, I do. You know? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm your husband. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah, of course I'm going to pray for you if, if, if you're not feeling it, you know? Yeah. Well, I think this is a great segue into just the beauty of the way that NFP uh, has been built in that mm-hmm. it is a continual moment or not moment it is a continual uh, cycle of discernment and prayer yep. on uh, family size and whether or not it's time to try to avoid or try to conceive mm-hmm. yeah um you know when uh when we were doing our marriage prep we also did focus that marriage inventory uh-huh. and um actually deacon tim did focus with us so Shout out to Deacon Tim. Um, and he knows all our deepest, darkest secrets. No, he doesn't. I'm just kidding. But um, he, you know, that was a question that came up, family size, you mm-hmm. know. And, you know, we were on the same page about that, you know. And uh, it was kind of like, I remember, I remember her reaction. She was like, wait, really? Like, that's all, that's all the kids you want? I'm like, yeah, that's all the kids. <laughs> you know, it was like one of those things where it's just like, oh, like, we, we actually disagreed on something here um it'd be the first of many but (laughs) I yeah I was kind of like okay yeah like we're we're gonna get there like we're gonna figure this out and as we figure it out like where we know we're open to kids you know it it wasn't a hang-up right it was like because we knew prayer was gonna be a part of it like hey we're open let's it's not a let's let's cross that bridge when we get there it's because we were both on the same page in terms of like how we would get there like it made getting there easier, I guess you could say. Right. Well, and the beauty of, you know, family size with NFP in particular is there isn't ever a point where you just have to say, that's it. That's how big our family is. We're done. Yep. Yep. Um, and so, you know, it's something that right now you and your wife might desire to have two kids and that's it. I don't actually know what your number is that you want. Two and, but, and a half, we averaged. <laughs> two and a half, two and a half kids. You might get to two and be like, oh my gosh, we need to have five. But yeah. then you might oh. get to four and be like, oh, that's enough for our family, right? Yeah. That, that discernment of family size is just, it's allowed to be just this continual process of yeah. discussion and prayer and being open to God's will. I mean, God knows how many family, how, how big your family is going to be. He knows exactly how big it's going to be. He's yeah. probably not going to tell you right now. <laughs> the, the, the need to not have to make a final decision, it, it just allows you to have the freedom to be a family, to, like where God's called you to be a family. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's actually, that's a really good point because that's something that I personally have been um, working on in my own heart is yeah. just being the family that my family is right now. Um, 
I have one daughter. She's awesome. I love her so much. I know that I want more kids. I know that our family will be, well, God willing, will be larger than just the three of us. Mm -hmm. And that's been on my mind so much Mm -hmm. at times that I haven't just enjoyed the small family that I have right now. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is so important. And I just think that's beautiful what you said of NFP allows you to just, just enjoy the family that you have right now. And when it comes up as the female cycle, you know, does its cycle Mm -hmm. discern, is it time to grow our family or is it not? And that's like, that's the one question that you have to ask. Is it time to grow our family or is it not? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost as if like it needs to be changed to NFD, like natural family discernment, right? Like not just (laughs) planning, but you're like really discerning, like where are we at right now? Right. And um, it's, it's super interesting because like, you know, like in foreplay, like I remember just like when I was younger, right? Like all the guys were just like, no, nah, man, like sex is awesome. Like, you know, obviously like, um, because I'm, you know, Catholic and I took chastity seriously. Like, it's not that it's easy, but like my life was so different from a lot of my peers. And so like in high school, like, you know, I, I people kind of like poked at me because like they knew I was like the Christian kid and I wasn't like public about it. I wasn't advertising myself as the chaste boy, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? But they would just always talk about like the act itself, you know, the marital act or marital act. They weren't having the marital act. (laughs) Um, (laughs) They would always talk about like having sex and, and it's like, no one talked about foreplay. No, you know? And so it's it's the same thing with like this phase where you're um, kind of discerning towards like, where your family is going to like you're meant to enjoy that too right like I, I I thoroughly believe prayer is a form of foreplay because it's like prayer helps me enjoy where my family is at right now Absolutely. right and and we feel like NFP restricts us or withholds us because it's a discipline and, and you know quite frank like you know, my wife does a lot of the work in the NFP with the charting and all that. And, you know, I have to cooperate with her uh, with, with that too, but it's, I still enjoy this, this time in, in our, our family life and foreplay within, you know, the marital act has to be enjoyed too. Like you don't just jump right to consummation. Right. Um, and so, you know, the analogy is not so perfect, but in that sense, like <laughs> you, you should enjoy it too. Right. Right, right. Okay, so let's talk practical. Um, a, a couple who has never brought prayer into their bedroom. What? Where? Where do we start? Yeah, start somewhere. Right. Uh, <laughs> schedule it. Make time for it. Right. The same way, like, um, like earlier on in our marriage, like things just had to be scheduled and it's just like it was yeah. so different from how I was used to uh we live very just free my time oh snap I have somebody else on my schedule I should take that into consideration oh yeah I'm married right but um prayer has to be scheduled in there too make your make your Jesus appointment make it make it important right right because uh, you're you're working with two uh probably very full schedules mm-hmm. <laughs> of a husband mm-hmm. and wife um And yeah, I mean, we, we schedule time to have dinner together. We schedule time to have a date together. We schedule time to have family time. We schedule time to have prayer time. Even if it's just like one minute, even if you just start with one minute. Do it. (laughs) Uh, And especially for the couples who maybe one person is praying more than the other, or one person is more faithful than the other, let your spouse know that you're praying for them. That's super important and make it significant, right? Like right now it's like, I'll start my morning with my pour over coffee. I'll read, you know, (laughs) the the readings for the daily mass and I'll mention my wife by name and uh, I'll just tell the Lord everything in my heart. And then I'll tell my spouse like, Hey, I was praying for you. And, and, And this is the cool part. If something comes up in my prayer and the prayer turns into more contemplative thing where I just, I'm really reflecting on something about my wife I'll talk to her about that and I'll let her know like hey I was really thinking about this I was really praying about this beautiful and sometimes she'd be like 
yo, me too. You know, I was like, oh, you were praying too? Wow. Like we should talk about that. And then we should pray <laughs> together. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then it would become like something you do together. Um, in another sense, like if, if there is not much prayer between both people, just start, make it simple. You know, uh, it's like right. a workout. The you way know? that my husband and I started was before we'd go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, we were, you know, already in bed, you turn the lights off. Um, and we would hold hands and we'd say in our father, a hail Mary and a glory be. Yep. And, and that was a beautiful place to start. And it took, I mean, we started and we did that for a couple of months until we grew our prayer life and, and it's still in growth mode. Our prayer lives are always going to be in growth mode. That's kind of, that's kind of how it works. <laughs> right. And like foreplay, you will know what uh, tickles your partner's fancy and in your prayer life, what works, what works for the both of you and, and what you're both right. into, you know, just to play both things in the analogy. Uh, you'll discover what you're both into and uh, what works for the both of you. Uh, and, and when you keep it simple and you grow from there, uh, you'll find yourself like not wanting to miss it. Right. right. Um, and it, it has to be authentic. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Prayer has to be super authentic and, uh, not that you should hide behind your prayer for those moments. You need to make a confession to your wife, like, Lord Jesus, uh, my credit sucks right now. Please let my wife understand. Like you shouldn't pray <laughs> like that. Right? But, um, I guess emotionally, like when you pray and you're just like, Hey, I, and you don't have, to, it doesn't just have to be in prayer. Right. You could just tell your wife, like, you know, like, I was praying and I kind of just realized like I'm developing like some depressive tendencies, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm always tired and I just can't get myself out of negative thoughts. And like, that's where a conversation will start. Right. And that's something that we're both going to pray about and right. we'll both like make that a content of both of our prayers. And then it'll come to like, you know, um, our shared prayer time. So when you're like authentic with each other about your personal prayer life, then you could bring it together but um, like spiritually, you need to be that intimate, right? Right. And that helps with intimacy throughout your entire relationship, right? That, that intimacy in prayer, like you said, can lead to intimate conversations. It can, um, you know, as prayer, as a part of your foreplay can lead to way more fun sex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So let's just like run through some examples. Cause I know, like, I feel like I listen to podcasts and people are like, you should do all these great things. And then they never actually say some examples of what you can do. Sure, um, sure. so like what, what are some simple ways that a couple can start praying together? Uh, you think it's going to be crazy, but have some time of prayer where you're facing face to face. Like when you guys got married and look each other in the eye and say a prayer together, whether it's just our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be, or you kick a freestyle prayer, whatever it is, that's super intimate. And Love it. you will not want to lie in your prayer and you will not want, you know, like it, you really come face to face with <laughs> where you're at and um, you should, that, that's, uh, that's an interesting place to start. Um, you know, I heard this from somebody else and I thought it was interesting, but if you're having a really, really, really hard time praying together, um, try writing down or journaling your prayer and have your spouse, you know, read your journal entry and you read your spouse's journal entry and make that a shared prayer time. Oh, that's great. I love that. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the introverts couple prayer, uh, but it, it helps because you know sometimes we're really uncomfortable vocalizing and that's okay. Right. Maybe it's easier to put your thoughts on prayer. Um, try that, you know? Yeah. Um, if, uh, if you and your spouse are like readers, um, mm -hmm. read a book together, find, you know, find a, uh, a book, maybe <laughs> the only thing I can think of right now is like, read love and responsibility together, but that might be a little, that's pretty deep. Hot. Um, <laughs> it would be great. <laughs> um, yeah. Christopher West's uh, heaven song is really good. Um, he gives reflections on, um, um, he, he talks about JP two's reflections on song of songs. So that's really interesting. Um, read a book of the Bible together yeah. and you know, scripture is 
is huge for prayer time. Read the daily readings together or even just the gospel of the day if you don't have that much time together. Um, but I think consistency is a huge thing. Whatever you do, choose something that you can be consistent at, right? Yes. Um, so if yeah, it's don't, just don't him, jump in and say, oh, we're going to pray together every single day for an hour. Oof. You've got a crazy life. Um, <laughs> Love it. Okay, so let's, we have talked a lot about the spousal, spousal prayer, and it's so important, but what about our listeners who are not quite there yet? They are maybe engaged or uh, single, hoping to be married. How can we prepare ourselves for having an intimate prayer life and therefore an intimate sex life uh, with our spouse? Yeah. Um, I mean, first, again, it starts with desire, right? Pray for that desirability um, to be right ordered, right? Like, um, if, if you want to get married, like, do you want it for the right reasons, mm. right? Or do you, if you want a family, do you want it for the right reasons? I think people just assume that marriage and being a father or mother is for them because that's what their parents were, right? Mm-hmm. But just praying for the desirability of that, um, that vocation is, is the, the first step, you know? Um, and then you really got to like, look at yourself and be like, well, what do I need to do in order to be that for somebody else? Right. Absolutely. So when you pray for that desirability, you then like just come to terms with like, am I ready for that? You know? And a lot of times when I was, um, I mean, my, my wife and I, we were, um, dating for, six years seven years before we got married and it's a long time it was a long time because a lot of the times I was praying for that is like for our vocation I asked myself am I ready for that a lot of times it was no right and it has to be a firm you know and uh, a full gift of yourself and if if you're not ready for that that's something you really got to pray for right just to ask for the graces to like and, and that's a work of God right It's God who makes the two husband and wife. You consent to it. You bring yourselves together and you're the primary ministers of the sacrament, but it's God who brings the souls together, right? Uh, So you have to ask for that grace to allow God to do that work in you. If it's just a thought, it's not going to get anywhere. If it's your desire and you're going to work for that desire to be right ordered, graces will fall right? Um, so you, you have to pray for that, those graces, that desire and, and, and that vocation. Um, uh, and it's so funny because I found, um, f- find a devotion, right? Like I found out that um, the Sacred Heart was going to be my devotion leading up to the wedding. And uh, for nine First Fridays, um, yeah, I dedicated it to um, our, our, our marriage and our future family. And uh, one of the promises of the Sacred Heart is um, all grace is necessary for your state in life. So that state of life being engaged and single into married and, you know, um, spousally united. And so, uh, yeah, that, that devotion really helped me find a devotion you're really into. If it's a, you know, Marian consecration or consecration to St. Joseph or um, any of our ladies apparitions, for me, it was the Sacred Heart. Um, or pray to the Holy Family. That's that's a good mm-hmm. one too. That's a fantastic one for <laughs> for uh, your family and <laughs> not <Yeah>. the family. <laughs> All that's right. <laughs> well, Joe, thank you so much. We covered a ton. I'm really excited for our listeners to hear what we had to say today. Um, and thank you so much for being on the podcast. That was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. And yeah, praying for you guys. I hope you enjoyed listening to our conversation. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at charting toward intimacy and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future episodes. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a series of really exciting episodes about how to talk to certain people in your life about NFP. So look out for those. We will see you in two weeks.